I'm Ryan Ozawa from Tech Spotting and also from Masthead, the social network for media people and media makers. We're building a community of editors, producers, reporters, writers, podcasters, bloggers, vloggers, people who live to inform and entertain across every medium. Masthead is powered by Mastodon. That's a free, open source, distributed, and federated social media platform. And that is a mouthful. If you're watching this video, you probably want to join Masthead or another Mastodon site. But Mastodon is a tool that's unfamiliar to most people, and that can make it confusing or even intimidating to sign up or join the conversation. If you'll give me just a few minutes, I'll try my best to make Mastodon not only something you can use, but something that you want to use. We'll go over what Mastodon is and how it works, but I want to get very quickly to how to use it. I'll show you what it looks like on the web, which is where everyone starts, but it's the mobile apps where the experience really shines. We'll cover that too. And I'll be telling you all about it here in Hawaii, because why not? If you get bored or confused, at least this background is more interesting to look at than a chalkboard or me for that matter. Are you ready? Great. First, what is Mastodon? Well, Mastodon is an online social media platform that was created in 2016 by Eugene Rochko, also known as Gargron, then a college student in Germany. He was inspired by open source software. Open source software is coded largely by volunteers out of love and made freely available for people to use, modify, and build into other things. If you've heard of the Linux operating system, or Apache web servers, or MySQL databases, or the PHP coding language, those are all open source tools that are not only free, but they make up the very foundation of the internet. Rochko knew he wanted to build something using the principles of open source, but what? He had built his own online message board, so he was looking at other attempts to build open source versions of platforms like Facebook and Twitter. Now, there was already sites and services like GNU Social and Identica and StatusNet and Quitter using protocols like OStatus and ActivityPub using APIs for XML and, well, if your eyes are glazing over, you can probably see one of the challenges that these services faced. They were very technical and required technical skills to set up. And even for users, they were pretty rough around the edges. Idealistic programmers had no difficulty at all, but not everybody is a programmer. I mean, sure, you could build your own computer and run Linux on it, right? But most people just buy a Dell or a Mac. Rochko was a huge fan of Twitter, and to some extent, Twitter is pretty simple. You post tweets, favorite tweets, follow people, reply, quote them. What if you could wrap some of the complex plumbing of open source social software into an interface that was just as clean and easy to use? Well, Mastodon was born. Mastodon looks like Twitter. Actually, it looks like TweetDeck, a Twitter power tool that Twitter eventually bought. I'll go into the interface in a bit, but a lot of Mastodon's features are familiar to Twitter users. It's just that tweets are called toots, that's a whole nother story. Retweets are called boots, likes are called favorites. So how is Mastodon different? Well, in many small ways and one big way. Mastodon posts can be up to 500 characters long instead of just 280. Mastodon has a strictly chronological timeline, something people wish they could get from Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. Mastodon makes it easy to fix a typo, allowing you to delete a toot and post a replacement with just one click. Mastodon has built-in content warnings, or CWs, which allow you to hide things that are not safe for work or are spoilers or might otherwise upset people. When you post a photo, Mastodon lets you add a description of the photo, which is incredibly helpful to the visually impaired. You can even choose a focal point on an image so they're not cropped badly when they need to fit in a specific window. But the big difference between Mastodon and Twitter is federation. So what is federation? Well, companies like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, they are all not federated. They are all single, privately owned, centrally controlled platforms. Everyone who tweets is on Twitter, and Twitter makes the rules. Twitter decides who and what stays and what goes, and Twitter wants as many people inside of its walled garden as possible in order to sell and show ads to them. Mastodon, as well as its fellow open source social platforms, is federated and decentralized. What this means is that there are dozens and dozens of Mastodon sites, or instances as they're called, and each site or instance has its own identity, its own rules, traditions, moderators, and means of support. Mastodon.art is for art lovers. Toot.cat is for cat lovers. Mastodon.technology is for tech folks. Writing.exchange is for writers. Scholar.social is for academics, and so on. On some Mastodon instances, nudity is A-OK. -okay. 
On others, all political talk must be put behind a content warning. Some instances charge an admission fee to cover the costs of running them. Others take donations, and most are run purely out of love. But wait, you might say, if I like both art and writing, do I need to join both mastodon.art and writing.exchange? Am I only allowed to talk about my cats on toot.cat? No and no. That's where federation comes in. The most common comparison made to explain federation is email. You might have signed up for Gmail because you love Google. Your friend might have signed up for Yahoo Mail because they're really into fantasy football. You and your boss have company email accounts to talk about work. Yet, you and your friend and your boss can all email each other. You aren't forced to only email other people on your email service the way you can only tweet with other Twitter users. All email servers speak the same language and exchange messages with each other. Well, Mastodon works the same way. You might set up shop on Mastodon.technology because you figure you'd like to hang out with other nerds. And sure, a lot of the conversation there is about technology. But if your friend is complaining about her thesis over on uh, scholar.social, you can follow her there, see her toots, and reply from your home instance. Practically speaking, you might be following many, many people on many, many instances, all talking about many, many different topics and not really need to care about where everyone is. Your timeline pulls everything together, posts and replies going back and forth automatically. It's like a timeline, like your email inbox. Messages are coming and going from all over. And because of decentralization, there's no almighty central authority that decides who can sign up or what they can talk about. Because it's open source, anybody can set up a Mastodon instance and run it however they like. So if the instance you signed up for shuts down or changes the rules or simply doesn't feel like home anymore, chances are 20 other instances that suit your taste have popped up in the meantime. And you may never have to worry about someone else taking the handle or username that you wanted because it's probably available on some instance somewhere. Decentralization and federation are the best parts of Mastodon, but I admit it is also the hardest to explain, so I hope my attempt made sense. The toughest decision you have to make before getting into Mastodon is choosing what instance to call home. And it's really not a very tough decision at all. There are directories out there to find them by topic or size or rules. You can just Google. And of course, if you're a journalist or if you make media, I hope you'll join Masthead. Now, let's go over how this all looks and works. I should say at the outset that this video is being made in early 2019, and there's a chance that things will look or work differently by the time you watch it. I still hope that you find this useful. Let's get into the Mastodon interface. Now the layout of every Mastodon instance is pretty much the same, but note that Mastodon is mobile responsive. That means that it's designed to look good on small screens like smartphones or tablets, but that also means that various design elements will shift around depending on the size of your screen. For this video, I'm focusing on how it looks on a desktop or laptop screen. All right, so if you're not logged in, the home page has a main center column to introduce the instance, its purpose, its rules, and its owners and moderators. At the bottom, you can see how many people have accounts there and how many posts or toots that they've made. And on the right, a preview of the messages that are streaming inside. And on larger instances, you'll be able to watch toots go by and get a sense of the conversation there pretty quickly. And on the left, you can either sign up or log in, so let's sign up. You pick your username, which is hopefully available, enter your email address and set your password, then click sign up. The system will send a verification message to the email address that you provided. You will open that email and click verify email address. That link will take you back to the Mastodon instance you're signing up for, where a message hopefully tells you that your email address has been successfully confirmed. Now you can log in, so let's log in. Before you're dropped into Mastodon, there's a brief three-screen tutorial. First, there's going to be a welcome screen reminding you to please remember the name of the instance that you're signing up for. Secondly, there's an explanation of the three columns or timelines that you're going to have inside of Mastodon. There's a home timeline, there's the local timeline, and there's the federated timeline. We're going to take a look at these in just a moment. Finally, there's going to be an explanation of the three basic interactions you have on Mastodon. Those are replies, boosts, and favors. Got it? Well, let's dive right in. This is the main interface of Mastodon, four columns. The first on the left is where you post your toots and also where you're going to access settings and edit your profile. 
Before tooting anything, you should edit your profile to include a profile photo or avatar, a header photo, and provide a brief bio. You can also add links, perhaps to your website or other social media profiles, and you can choose to list yourself in the membership directory. In fact, if you use hashtags in your bio for topics that you're interested in, other people interested in those topics will be able to find and follow you. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff here, including the ability to approve followers. If you go under preferences, the ability to set the default privacy of your toots, you can hide the people you follow, you can block search engines. But you're going to have to explore these options on your own because I want to get back to the home screen. Let's go back to Mastodon. The second column is your home timeline. This is where the posts of everyone you follow will appear, no matter where they're located. Of course, as a new user, this column might be empty or only populated with toots from the administrators or moderators of your instance, and that's okay. Usually they were going to pin posts with helpful information on getting started. The third column is your notifications timeline. Once again, as a new user, this is probably empty. Eventually, this is where you're going to see toots that people have directed at you or posted in reply to one of your toots. It'll also tell you when someone follows you or someone favorites one of your toots. As you become active in your instance and across the Federation, or, or Fediverse as the wider network is called, you're going to be focusing a lot on your notifications to keep up with activity that's directed at you. The last column on the right is a variable column. By default, it's called Getting Started. It lists the different things that you can do there. Here you can look at your local timeline. That's all the public posts on your instance. You can also choose to view the federated timeline. These are posts that are coming into your instance from other instances. This is usually the most active view in Mastodon. One thing to note, the posts in the federated timeline are usually only the posts coming into your instance because someone, or possibly you, is following the people who tooted them on another instance. It's hard to explain. It's like maybe you subscribe to a magazine and the stories get delivered to you where you are, but because it passes through the front door or the lobby, everyone else can read it on the way or something like that. Anyway, besides those two timelines, you can also send and receive direct messages to other users. You can see the toots that you favorited. You can set up lists of other users. You can organize them however you see fit. For example, you might set up a list of other sports fans or other teachers. There's also a link to the profile directory, which was just introduced. Now, finding people to follow is a challenge on any new social platform, but the directory or index of popular hashtags is a way to make that easier. So that's the Mastodon interface. Four columns, one to toot and change the settings, one for your personal timeline or news feed, one for notifications, and one for many things, including the local and federated timeline. Not as simple as Twitter, I admit, but hopefully simple enough. You sign up, you set up your profile, and start tooting. Now wait, if you're still with me, here's a little extra information you might find useful. Now the Mastodon web interface, which we just covered, is pretty nice, but you might find it a little busy or even confusing. And the great news is you can make Mastodon look however you like. Because Mastodon is a pretty face on top of standard open source plumbing, changing the interface is pretty easy. On the web, one of the ways to do this is with a tool called Halcyon. We've installed it on Masthead and we called it BirdSight because all this does is transform Mastodon into something that looks exactly like Twitter. If you're into Twitter and find all those columns in Masthead to be too much, Halcyon or BirdSight might be just what you need. But perhaps the best way to experience Mastodon is with a mobile app. And there are lots of apps for iOS and Android that can present your Mastodon instance and timelines in the Fediverse in interesting and usually simple ways. Again, because the plumbing of Mastodon is open source, apps can wrap it in different skins, add unique features, and basically make using Mastodon as simple or as complicated as you like. Just remember that Mastodon is the platform, like email is a platform. So you won't find an app called Mastodon in your app store the same way you won't find an app called email. What you're looking for is called a Mastodon client, a front end, the same way you might grab Airmail or Spark to handle your email. Look in your app store for Mastodon clients or just Google for reviews. Now my favorite for iOS is called Toot, but there are lots of other options out there. Amarok is extremely popular and extremely free. With an app, you'll find using and checking Mastodon to be just as natural and easy as checking Facebook or Twitter. In fact, once you signed up for an instance, I recommend going the app route. You just log in with your instance name, your email address, and password. Okay, we covered a lot, but 
Hopefully most of it was interesting or at least useful for you with all the headlines about Facebook violating your privacy and trust, all the news about abuse and trolls on Twitter. I think the time has come for free, open source, decentralized and federated social media platforms. And thanks to Mastodon and its many apps, it's almost easy for anyone to get started. Finally, I invite you to consider joining Masthead. Our instance is dedicated to journalists and media makers like bloggers and podcasters, but really anyone is welcome. While the topics might trend toward the news or the news business, you'll still find a fair amount of food talk and cat pictures there as well. For Masthead and TechSpotting, I'm Ryan Ozawa, and I'll see you around the Fediverse.